Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learnt a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Bridge of tragedy. Over the river, men are throwing a web of steel cables and concrete. The bridge. Calculating to the thousandth of an inch. Figuring stress and strain of steel supports. Computing everything to its minutest fraction. The bridge must be safe and strong and last forever, perhaps. But there is one thing that is not calculated, not figured, not computed. And that, perhaps, is the most important element, the most vital part of the bridge. The workers. The bridge workers. Oh, uh, just a minute. Why, Bill, what's the matter, dear? You're home early. Oh, nothing's the matter, sweetheart. Everything's perfect. I've got a job. Oh, Bill, that is wonderful. But what kind of a job is it? Well, you, you're not going to be too keen on it. But it's my type of work. Not I... the bridge, Bill. Oh, you promise. Myra, listen to me, please. I tried to get other kinds of work, but there just isn't any other work for me. I'm a bridge worker. I can't let you and the baby starve. I've been out of a job now for six months Oh, but and... Bill, you know how I feel when you're up there. Never knowing whether you'll come home each night. Dreading to hear a knock at the door and someone waiting to tell me you've fallen. There's been so many accidents on the new bridge, so many men killed. I'll be careful, Myra. That death siren won't blow for me. Those other men probably said the same thing. Told their wives that they'd be careful, too. Myra, it's my kind of work and we need the money. I start tomorrow. Oh, I beg your pardon, but uh, but could you tell me where I can find Jim McVicker? Jim McVicker? Yes, that's right. He's a friend of mine. He told me to come here today and said there'd be a job for me on the bridge. Well, what's the matter? You haven't heard? Jim was killed yesterday afternoon. Killed? Fell from the bridge tower while he was spinning cable. Haven't found his body yet. They've been dredging for it all night. Perhaps they'll never find it. What with the undertow and everything? Killed, and I... And that's what'll happen to all of us if we don't leave this job. There's a hoodoo on the old darn thing. Yes, You've it on the head. There's a jinx on this bridge, all right. Too many men have been killed. And then those... Those voices. What voices? You know the saying about the spirits of the bridge workers who were killed on the job coming back and haunting the bridge? That's only a superstition. I never heard any voices. Superstition, eh? Yeah, that's what I thought. But I don't anymore. Jim McVicker heard the voices two days before he died. Yeah, and so did Joe and Tom and Tiger and Shorty and all the rest of them that are dead. The voices warned them to leave, but they didn't. Believe you me, if I hear them voices, I'll leave as quick as that. Who do I see about getting a job? You, you still want one? I need the work. All right, mate. George Austin. He's the contractor for this job. His office is over there. 
He's doing the order now. But you can't say we didn't warn you. Thanks. Come in. Mr. Austin? Yes? What can I do for you? Oh, my name is Bill Wilson. I'm a bridge worker. I want a job. What was the last bridge you worked on? Oh, the Great Western. That was about two years ago. Yes, yes, I know. Now, I took on different kinds of jobs after it was built. You see, I got married and my wife worried when I... I, yeah, I understand. And now? I need the job. Seems like I'm not fitted for other kinds of work. I see. Well, before you start, you... You know, it's dangerous work, don't you? We've had quite a few casualties. I know that. You know? Yes, some of the men told me. And I know about the voices, too. Are you sure you still want the job? A man has to work. Uh, I see. All right. You're hired. Oh, thank you, Mr. Austin. Just a minute. I'll call Calvin. He's the foreman. He'll tell you what you have to do. Cal? Cal? What is it, boss? I want to see you for a minute. Coming right over, Mr. Austin. What is it? Come in. Calvin, I've just hired this man. I want you to show him round, get his name on the payroll. Right. Uh, how are you, Mr. Uh, uh, Wilson, Bill Wilson. Ah, pleased to know you, Bill. You think you can find something for Wilson to do right away? We're behind schedule, you know. Well, he can he can work with me on the tower. Oh, fine, Cal. Yes, uh, you are short-handed there. Yes, since yesterday. Bill here, well, he can take old Jim McVicker's place. Hey, Bill, how are you doing? I'm all right, Cal. I'm coming over. I say, you're not looking so good. What's the matter? I, I don't know. I suppose it's because I'm not used to being up so high anymore. Been away from bridge work for two years now. That sort of makes me dizzy. Well, you'll be all right after lunch. And speaking of lunch, it's, it's just about time. Well, I'd better tie things down back there. So this wind blowing, it will be going right over the hill time. Yes, it is blowing. Blowing pretty hard. Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson. You are the next to go. What? Did you say something, Cal? You call me, Bill. I thought you said something to me. <laughs> no, I haven't said anything, fella. Hmm. It must be the wind. It's not the wind, Bill Wilson. Leave while there's still time. Leave this bridge. There is death here. The voices. The voices. Cal, I heard the voices. I'm leaving. I'm going down. Oh, hey, wait a minute, Bill. What's the matter? I heard the voices. The, the voices that the others heard. Well, I didn't hear anything. But I'm going down, Cal. Now, now, look here. Perhaps you just imagined you heard those voices. No, no, no. I heard them, I tell you. They warned me. Oh, well, all right. I suppose you'd... Well, you'd better knock off for the rest of the day. Yes. Yes, I, I, I'd better. Bill! Bill! What just that? Bill! Yes, let me help you. I, I'm going to... Fall. Oh! Sounds so weird, Lamont. Each time the voices have been heard, a man has fallen to his death. Yes, I was reading in the paper this morning, Margot, that the contractor, George Austin, is having trouble with the men. They're afraid to go to work. He's had to give them extra bonus to keep them on the job. Why, perhaps that's the answer. What? Perhaps someone, some enemies of Austin's, is doing this to frighten the men. Slow Austin up on his job and ruin him. Well, it seems a pretty horrible thing to do just to cause a man's financial ruin. Yes, I suppose you're right. Ah. <sighs> Can't be that. But I'm going to find out if. Well, I wonder who it is. Red. Hello, Miss Lane. Uh, I mean, uh, hello. Well, what brings you here? Well, I was cruising around in my cab. I, I was cruising around and I got to thinking of myself. So I thought, now isn't this a beautiful sort of day? I thought. So then I thought, Miss Lane ought to be out riding. She's all alone. Oh, so, I th so she's all alone, is she? And what am I doing here? Oh, I, I, I didn't. Uh, 
I didn't know you were here, Mr. Cranston. I, I didn't say... Oh, gosh. I reckon that was a fox pass all right, that was. <laughs> no, it wasn't, Fred. It was very thoughtful. Come on in. Well, I only thought Miss Lane might want to go shopping or for a drive or something. I, I thought... You just I... wanted a customer, Red. Isn't that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, a customer. Oh. Well, Red, you've got a customer. Me. Well, where are you going, Lamont? Well, first we're going to Red's house. Yeah, first we're going to my house. I... What? Red, do you have an old suit that I could wear? Old suit? Uh, I'm wearing my old suit now. You can have my new suit if you want to, Mr. Cranston. No, no, no. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, let me see. Yes, I think the suit you have on would be just about right for me. What? Red, have you a brother? No. But I got two married sisters, Isabel and Clarissa. Well, well uh, now you've got a brother, too. Me. I'm your brother. Stan. Stan? But you aren't my brother. Oh, I don't understand. You're not the only one, Red. Lamont, what is all this Stan business? Margot, I'm going to get a job on that bridge as a worker. I want to hear those spirit voices with my own ears. Come on, Red. We've got a job to do. As bridge workers. heard there was a job here on your bridge, Mr. Austin. I well, I need a job, so here I am. Of course, you know about the trouble we've been having here. The, the men killed. Yeah, yeah, I read about it. The men think they've been hearing ghost voices. Well, the way I look at it, you... you still want the job? Um... Uh, Eggleston. Uh. Stan Eggleston. Of course I want the job. I, I'm not afraid. My brother Red always says that if you... Oh, just a minute. Come in. Uh, hello, George. Well, what do you want, Bascom? <laughs> Hell now. That's not a fine way for a man to talk to his creditor. I warned you that I didn't want you spying around here. Now get out. I just wanted to check up on how the work was progressing. I've good reason for wanting to know. One hundred and fifty thousand good reasons. You'll get your money. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I'm not worrying. <laughs> but perhaps you are... I read about the trouble you've been having down here, and I just want Just a minute, Bascom. Uh, Stan, would you go into the other room and wait? Uh, I'll be with you in a minute. What? Oh, yes, yes, certainly, Mr. Austin. Yeah. This one? Yes. All right. Now, what are you trying to do, Bascom? Frighten my men off? You know I've been having trouble. Uh, yes, that's right. Losing quite a few men, aren't you? Behind schedule, too. That's none of your business. Yeah, perhaps not, Austin. But it will be my business if you fall down on your commitments. If I do, you'll win. You'll get everything I have. But I haven't failed yet. No. No, you haven't failed. Yet. But you've only got 30 days more. Get out. Get out and stay out. Or I'll have you put out bodily. The siren. That means another man has fallen. The bridge has claimed another victim. We'll return to our story in just a moment. But first, our announcer. And we turn over the record and continue. And now, back to the shadow. The long, mournful siren that signals death amongst the construction gang blows once again. Contractor George Austin listens stunned to its one-note requiem for a moment, then strides across the room and opens the door. Mr. Austin! Davis! Davis has fallen! I'll be right with you! <laughs> it won't be long now. No, Mr. Bowser. Huh? Perhaps not. Huh? If you're allowed to continue your work. What? Who said that? Men call me. The uh, Shadow. Uh, I can't see you. No man has ever seen the shadow. What do you want with me? What do you know of these accidents? What have you to do with them? Uh, I have nothing to do with them. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. If George Austin fails to complete the bridge by the specified time, you will profit, Mr. Bassler. I lent Austin the money to complete the project. If he fails, I'll get everything he has. But I And still... Austin will be ruined. Isn't that right? 
You want to see him run, don't you? Austin undercut me on this job. He took it away from me. Now, why shouldn't I like to see him fail? He'd do the same to me if he got the chance. That is the argument that all men like you make, Bascom. What are you going to do? Nothing yet. I have no proof that you had anything to do with the deaths of these men. But remember, Bascom, you will be watched. Austin still has a chance to complete this bridge if he's not interfered with. You the man that wants the job here? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, I, uh... My name is Calvin. Mr. Austin asked me to take care of you. He's busy. How do you do? I'm, uh... Ever work on the bridge? Well, well, well no, I, uh... I've been doing... Well, what are you doing here, then? Well, I... So there was a job here. And how do we know that you have something to do with these actions? Well, now, look here. I, I never been near this place well, before. What makes you think you can do this kind of work? Well, if you'll just give me the chance, I'll tell you. Go ahead. You see, I've been doing construction work almost all my life. I uh, see. What kind? I'm a riveter. Think you could learn to spin cable? Oh, I have a crack at it. All right. You're hired. Report for work tomorrow morning. Right. I'll be there. Uh, wait a minute. What's your name? Name, uh, Stan. Stan Eggleston. Stan Eggleston. Yeah, I live with my brother. He's called Red. He drives a cab. Any other relatives, Stan? No, sir. Well, then he'd be the one to... Well, this is just a matter of form, you understand. But in case anything should happen to you, he'd be the one to inform. Uh, is that right? Oh, you're getting along better than I expected for a new hand, Stan. Oh, thanks, Cal. I'm doing my best. One thing, I don't feel dizzy being up this high. Uh, in that case, I'll leave it just out for a while. If you get into any trouble, call me. I'll be right up ahead there. All right, Cal. This is a warning, Stan. Leave this bridge. Leave while there is still time. Leave this bridge. There is this for you if you stay. Help! Run, run, run! Stan! Stan! Another one gone. I was talking to him not two minutes before he fell, Mr. Austin. I told him he was getting along fine for a new hand, and then I went to the other end to do my own job, and it, well, it happened. Well, the only thing we can do is inform his family. When is this thing going to stop? When is it going to stop? Oh, just a moment. Oh, hello, Red. Hello, Miss Lane. I... Red, something's worrying you. What is it? I've got something on my mind, Miss Lane. I... Can I come in, Miss Lane? Please, can I? Why, of course, Red. Come in. Thanks. Aren't you feeling well? No, Miss Lane. No, I'm, I'm not. Well, I've called a doctor. No, no, Miss Lane, no. It's it's not that kind of sickness. What is it? Bad news? Yeah, I'm afraid that's it. Bad news. Very bad. Tell me. Perhaps I can help you. It's the report. A report from Mr. Austin. It said... Austin? Red, are you trying to tell me? Please, Miss Lane, I was only trying to break it gently. Oh. Please. Oh. Please don't cry. Oh. You've got to be brave. Tell gotta... me, Red, tell me what happened. Well, Mr. Cranston got the job at the bridge like like he said he was going to. And, oh. Well, like the others, he... He fell, too. Oh. No, 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 please, Miss Lane, you, you must try and pull yourself together. Oh, I had a feeling that Lamont shouldn't have done it. Poor Mr. Cranston. <laughs> he was such a great fella. <laughs> Mr. Austin, the men have quit working. They won't go back. What, Calvin? Oh, they're all quitting. They want their money. I I've ordered the cashier to close up. Well, this is the end of everything. We want our money, Austin! We're quitting! Uh, Mr. Austin, I, I can't hold them much longer. I'll talk to them. 
Men, please, listen to me. No, I didn't talk, Austin, but we're quitting just this time. That's right, we want our money. Tell the pay master to pay us all. You'll all get your money now if you want to quit. But any of you who want to continue... Don't you understand, Austin? We're leaving for good. That's right, what's good is money to us if we're not alive to enjoy it. It's all right for you to tell us to go up on the screen and risk our mix while you sit nice and comfortable in your office. Men, would it make you feel any better if I went up? I've always said that I'd never ask the men working for me to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. And I'll stick to that promise. I'm going up now and prove it. Is there anyone here who isn't afraid to go up with me? I'm going with you, boss. If you're not afraid, I'm not. Thank you, Calvin. Come on, let's go. How long have we been up here, Calvin? About half an hour, Miss Boston. Well, I should imagine that will show the men that the bridge is safe to work on. We'll go down in a few minutes. If the accidents would only stop, I could get more money from the bank. Look at them down there watching. Yes. They expect us to fall. Yes. They're so sure we're going to, it almost seems a shame to disappoint them. What? You're going to die, George Austin. And at last I have you up here. I wanted you to die the way she died, falling down, down, down. You! (laughs) Calvin, you are the voice. You've done all this. Yes, I'm the voice. I pushed your men to their death. You wanted to ruin me? Yes, I wanted to ruin you. But more than that, I wanted you to die as my daughter did. I planned all this to bring you up here and... No, 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 you couldn't. You're my friend. I've known you for years. I'm your friend, eh? Your friend. <laughs> but my daughter wasn't good enough for your son to marry. I had no control over that. It wasn't anything I could do. He wasn't in love with her. It was you who persuaded him not to. You who sent him away. And she wasn't good enough for him, you thought. <laughs> Alan, you're out of your mind. Yes, yes, perhaps I am. Yes. Perhaps if you'd seen your daughter jump to her death, then you'd be out of your mind, too. It's all your fault. All yours. Calvin, Calvin, let's go below and talk this thing over. You're mistaken, I tell you. Ah, yes. You'll go down, all right. Ah, yes, you'll go down the quick way, turning over and over. It'll only take a second or two, but in that second, you'll suffer. Yes, you'll suffer as he suffered. Uh, Calvin! Let go of me. We'll both go over. Let go. That's what I do. I have nothing to live for now, and you die. And I can rest then. Go. I'm slipping. I can't hold on much longer. Oh, you're, you're going to die if you suddenly fail to save, save them. What? No, Carlin, you fail. My suit. Let go. Let go. I'm choking. Austin. Are you all right? What? Who said that? I can't see you. Men call me the Shadow. You can't see me because of a hypnotic mist I've cast before your eyes. Shadow? Yes, I've heard of you. Calvin, where is he? He's lying there, unconscious, Austin. He tried to... He... Yes, I know. But justice has caught up with him. As it does with all criminals. In all the papers that was, Miss Lane, how this fellow Calvin hated Austin because Austin's son jilted his daughter. It appears before Calvin became a bridge worker, he was in vaudeville, a, a, a ventriloquist. And that's where he learned to throw his voice. Then pretending to help the new hands, up he'd go with them, scare him with this weird voice and then push him off the bridge back. And very clever he was, too, pretending to be so innocent. Please, Red, let's not talk about it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Miss Margot. Oh, I should have more sense. Red. Uh, I will say another word. I, I... Now, just you stay right here, Miss Lane. I, I, I'll answer it for you. Uh, 
Hello, Red. Oh, hello, Mr. Cranston. What? But, but, but you should... I'm not. I'm not. You'll say. Why, of course, Margot. <laughs> you didn't think... <laughs> oh, Margot. Why didn't you let me know? What a thing to do to me. Margot, I didn't realize. I didn't mean to frighten you. Oh, I'm not. You're safe. That's all that matters. You'll never know how I felt. How did you do it? Well, when Calvin stopped that ventriloquist act of his, I hypnotized him, yelled out, and pretended to fall. Oh, I see. And Calvin thought that you had really fallen without his help. Oh, Lamont. Oh, Lamont. Red. He knows. What? Oh, that I'm the chef? (laughs) No, I, I don't think so. I don't think Red knows I'm the shadow, Margot. What do you mean, Lamont? The excitement was too much for him. He's fainted. Fainted? <laughs> In a moment, I shall return with further news of the shadow. But first, your announcer. Next week, same time, same station, we bring you another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. (laughs) This feature is produced by Reg Johnston of Grace Gibson Radio Productions. A masterpiece of suspense.